Good morning, everybody. This is Steve Sabadusky, publisher of BayouBuzz.com. And uh, today we're going to be talking Louisiana budget with Jean Mola, Louisiana budget project. Did I get your last name right? Is it Mola? Mola. Mola. Okay. Mola. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, good morning to you. Uh, good morning to you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. So, uh, what I'm trying trying to uh, do at this point is to get an idea is what the heck is going on. We have what four or five days left in the uh, uh, in the legislature, the fiscal session, and uh, I was hoping that you could give us an idea. A lot happened last night, I believe. Am I correct? You are correct. Um... Well, there, there's, there is a lot going on. Uh, they have five days to solve this problem. Um, that they, the legislature has five days to solve the problem that they created for themselves by uh, passing a series of temporary taxes in 2015 and 2016. Uh, I think that's a key thing to remember, that, that, that we're here because the legislature created this problem. Um, and there's two things they have to do. They have to uh, pass a budget. Uh, for the fiscal year that starts July 1st, um, and they have to pass the tax bills uh, to pay for the key items in that budget. And so the tax bills right now are over in the Senate. Um, and so last night, uh, the, the Senate Reven Revenue and Fiscal Affairs Committee uh, met until 8 o'clock, and they passed a tax bill um, uh, that came over from the House, and they added some money to it. And so right now, um, the, the tax bill that's heading to the Senate floor and could be voted on as early as this afternoon would fund the entire fiscal cliff. Um, there's a $650 million fiscal cliff. That's what um, the governor and, and, and advocates such as ourselves believe the state needs to raise in order to avoid critical cut to programs. The House and, and some of the conservatives are looking for a smaller number. Um, then there's the budget, um, and there's two versions of the budget. There's a budget bill by uh, Representative Walt Leger that basically funds everything um, at current year levels, um, doesn't include any big cuts. And there's a budget bill by Representative Cameron Henry, uh, actually a set of budget bills by Cameron Henry that fund um, less than everything. That, that includes cuts to higher education, health care, public safety, uh, uh, sheriffs, and so forth. And all those budget bills are going to be debated in the House this morning, um, starting in about uh, 52 minutes from now. So, okay. Okay. Uh, so the budgets are in the House, the taxes are in the Senate, um, and I think we can be pretty sure at this point that, that none of them are going to survive the process exactly as they look right now. I think that the hope is that the Senate uh, completes its work, the House completes its work, um, and then the weekend will be devoted to hashing out the differences between the Senate's vision for taxes and budgets and the House's vision for taxes and budgets. And uh, my sincere hope is that they get this resolved because if they don't finish by Monday at midnight, um, then we're going to be back and doing another special session. Gotcha, which is not very pretty. And then they have to start all over, am I correct? Uh, they would well depending on what they got passed if they got a budget passed but not the taxes i mean they, they would have to finish whatever they didn't finish in the regular session or in the in this special session unless there's a veto then they start all over and if it's and the governor has his veto pen as he always does and and as we learned this week it's incredibly hard to override a governor's veto uh, you know the governor vetoed the budget that was sent to him uh in the regular session um on, on the last day of the regular session and there was a lot of anger in the Republican ranks in the House um, that the budget got vetoed. A lot of them felt a little hung out to dry, I think, even though it shouldn't have come as a surprise to anybody that the governor vetoed the budget because he all but guaranteed it way back in January. Uh, but there was a lot of anger, but still they could only muster 52 votes to override that veto. That was 18 fewer votes than they needed. Um, so there's a good reason that only two vetoes have been overridden in the modern history of Louisiana um, and none for almost 30 years. It's been that long, huh? <laughs> really? It's been since 1993. Romer. Buddy Romer, I think, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 So that's, that's, that's really amazing. So, uh, so 
Uh, Lance Harris, Representative Lance Har Harris, Republican, basically said that uh, the budget that, that at least the taxes that were approved out of committee in the Senate, basically dead on arrival, I think is pretty much what he said. Assuming that uh, it passed. That was what he indicated. Um, you know, look, the, the, the House is a very difficult place. Um, you have 61 Republicans over there. You take 70 votes to, to pass the tax bill. And, and the Republicans have a really difficult time because they have about 20 to 25 members of their caucus, which is, uh, I, I kind of call them the freeloader caucus, uh, because they refuse to vote for any taxes whatsoever. They're not going to vote for a single penny of taxes uh, whatsoever. Uh, they want the services that those taxes pay for. They're not out there saying we should close hospitals, we should close nursing homes. We should uh, pay teachers any less uh, or do any of the things that, that, that would be required if you don't vote for any taxes, but they don't want to vote for any taxes. So um, so if you're going to get to 70 votes, you need a lot of Democrats and you need a majority of, of Republicans. You need about 35 to 40 Republicans uh, plus at least 30 to 35 Democrats uh, out of the 41 Democrats to get a tax bill going. And so... Um, and so you do have a majority of the Republicans right now on the House, uh, in the House, who are in favor of passing some kind of taxes. The question is, uh, they just don't want to renew all of the taxes that the governor wants. So when you boil this question down to, to its essential nature, um, the, the Republicans will go for somewhere in the neighborhood of $500 million, um, in, in taxes. Um, the, the Democrats want it to go to 650, 648, 643, um, somewhere in that number. They're about $150 million apart. Um, and so that doesn't sound like the end of the world in, in a $30 billion budget, but it actually does include um, a lot of very important things, um, mental health, substance abuse treatment, money uh, uh, for sheriffs that are used to house local uh, inmates, and, of course, higher ed, uh, including top scholarships, which would not be fully funded um, if we don't raise the full amount of the cliffs. cliff. Sure. So uh, do you expect the Senate to uh, approve what the uh, committee approved last night? Well, what the Senate did was very interesting. Um, it, you know, the, the, the Republican proposal had been, you know, there's a, there's a, a one cent sales tax, what we call the clean penny, right. uh, expiring at the end of June. And so um, the difference to this point had been um, uh, Republicans wanted to renew one third of the penny, and uh, Democrats generally wanted to renew half the penny. Um, so it's important to keep in mind that that re whether the Democrat or Republican plan passes, uh, sales taxes are going down on July first. Um, and so when when the the bill got to the uh, uh, Senate uh, committee last night, it was at one third of a penny. It was the Republican version, and a lot of people I think expected it to be amended up to a half a penny. Um, the committee didn't do that. What they did instead was they took away exemptions on the existing four pennies, uh, exemptions that are enjoyed by the business community. So they basically put it, uh, they said, uh, things that are now exempt from paying sales tax, farm machinery and equipment and manufacturing machinery and equipment and some other large exemptions uh, are going to be taken off. And that's how they raise uh, an extra couple of hundred million dollars um, just by taking away sales tax exemptions that, 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 that certain favored industries don't have to pay. So what you have now, as those tax bills go to the Senate floor, I suspect you're going to have a lot of industry lobbyists, uh, the Chemical Association, lobby groups like that are going to be working uh, overdrive to try to get that killed um, or, or, or throttled back in some way or maybe hopefully amended up to half a penny. So the question right now uh, for the Senate, the first question is how much money do we raise? And then the other question is, should we raise it from, from industry and business, or should we make uh, people, including low-income people, pay that, uh, that extra money? Sure. Uh, now, obviously, the lobby is not very happy about it. I saw a comment uh, on Twitter from lobby, and basically uh, what they're saying is, as would be expected, of course, that uh, this is really harmful to the state of Louisiana. Uh, it, it impacts both businesses and employees. Your, your take? Um, I, I, well, I think it impacts uh, 
shareholders um, and and customers of those customers. I mean, if you if you tax uh, the chemical industry uh, and people who are making petrochemicals along the, the Mississippi River, um, the costs of, of those taxes are going to be passed on to the shareholders uh, who are all over the world, not just in Louisiana, and they're going to be passed on to the customers of those businesses who also are all over the world. Um, so if you're a shareholder uh, or you're a customer down the line who buys chemicals or, or buys uh, the things that, that these industries produce, then, then sure, you might feel a little bit um, of a pinch, but, but I think it's a stretch to say that the average Louisianan is going to um, is going to feel much for this because the industry is not pulling up roots. They're here because we have a Mississippi River and because we have uh, a lot of natural resources and we have a favorable regulatory environment. Um, so this idea that, that Exxon is going to uh, pull up roots and go somewhere else or Dow Chemical or, or any of these companies um, that, that, uh, that are based here um, and that have their operations here, the idea that they're going to pull up stakes and, and move to Texas, I think, is, is scare tactics by the industry. This really is a question of, of who should pay, who should bear the burden uh, at this point of balancing the budget. And, and we have, you know, on one side, large multinational corporations. On the other hand, uh, people who go to the store every day and buy basic necessities. Um, it's, a, it's a fundamental question of, of who we think ought to pay this. Okay, I'm going to try to put up a uh, tweet right now. Let's see if I can, if I can get it. Uh, bear with me using this uh, amazing technology. Now, you can't see it, unfortunately, so I'm going to just kind of read it to you. And this is from KD Nola. If you want to protect services for the elderly and disabled, including LRS and pediatric day health care centers, and TOPS fully funded, call Senator Nal to support revision to HB 27. So apparently, obviously, there's a full court press going on. Uh, I saw commercials uh, yesterday uh, on TV. I think it was from about the uh, the hospital in, in uh, New Orleans. Um, uh, the charity hospital, they're trying to stress how important funding is for them. And so, um, are, are we, do you think we're going to be in a situation where we're going to have people supporting TOPS, you know, fighting against those people supporting hospitals uh, like we had, certainly like we had in the past, uh, fiscal session? I certainly hope that this doesn't come down to a battle between uh, higher ed and healthcare. Uh, it shouldn't be that way um, because it should be easy. I mean, we have $1.4 billion in taxes coming off the books on July 1st. And the most that anybody is talking about replacing, uh, we're not talking about raising taxes so much as we're talking about replacing revenues. It's true that taxes uh, would be higher and are going to be higher than they would be if the legislature did nothing at all. But net tax revenue, we're going to be taking in, we're going to be charging citizens less on July 1st than we do right now. And so uh, this is, is a problem the legislature created. It's a problem the legislature can solve. And, and for the life of me, I don't understand if, if you're somebody who's willing to take a vote for a third of a penny and you're going to have a, a, a $400 million tax vote on your political resume, why wouldn't you just uh, uh, vote for a half a penny or vote to remove some exemptions so that you don't have to have this um, decision between keeping a hospital open or telling a college student that you're not going to get the whole scholarship we promised or telling a campus that we're not going to give you fund you at current year level and you're going to have to decide whether to lay off a, an English professor or, uh, or to do without uh, uh, you know, some other activity that you value on your campus. Um, these decisions, this, this is not a difficult problem. And again, we're not here because of, of a recession or a natural disaster or some factor beyond the legislature's control. We're here because the legislature created this problem and it is in their power to solve it in the next five days. All it takes is the political courage to make these votes. Definitely understand that. Now, obviously, and we talked about this last time you were on the show, and, and that is that uh, basically the, say, Republicans, the conservatives who, especially in the House, 
who basically want to hold the line. I mean, they, they're represent, they, their constituents are telling them no more taxes. Now, you have uh, Bernie Pinsnet's poll that, that confirms that, but then you have the LSU poll that said that, generally speaking, that the uh, taxpayers don't mind uh, raising taxes if, if uh, they're going to get certain services. So I, I guess my, my, my uh, real point is that the legislators, the conservative legislators, I mean, they basically are doing what their own specific constituents want them to do, given the demography. Am I correct? I, I would push back on that a little bit. You know, remember, last year was the year we were supposed to do tax reform. Um, you know, the idea behind the original clean penny of sales tax was we put it on temporarily and that'll give us three years to do real tax reform. And so last year there were a lot of reform suggestions on the table and all of those got ignored by the legislature. And what we heard from uh, legislators, particularly Republicans, who didn't want to do reform was my constituents are not complaining to me about the sales tax. Uh, right. And I, I can't. I lost count of how many Republican legislators told me that. I haven't gotten a single complaint about the sales tax. So, um, um, so, 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 if that's still true, and I and I have no reason to believe that their phones are burning up because of this extra penny of sales tax that most people don't notice when they go to the cash register. I mean, that's you know, you you go to a, a, a Macy's and buy a hundred dollar pair of shoes. It's an extra dollar in sales tax. Most people don't notice that kind of thing. Um, so, so I think that's a, a, a little bit disingenuous. Now, uh, uh, obviously, take and, and the other thing to keep in mind is, again, uh, uh, more than half of the Republican caucus is now on record as voting for taxes. Uh, Lance Harris, it, it's, it's the, the people who are truly the holdouts here, again, is this freeloader caucus. Um, and, and I would have a res respect for the, 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 the freeloader caucus if they came out there and said, you know what, my, my anti-tax stance is so important to me that I'm willing to live without my hospital, and I'm willing to tell people they need to leave nursing homes, and I'm willing to look a college student in the face and saying we shouldn't t fund tops, uh, uh, and, and, and you're going to be on your own and paying for scholar college. If that was their position, um, I wouldn't agree with it, but I would respect the intellectual honesty. But that's not what they do. They want the things that government pays for. They're just unwilling. Uh, they don't have the political courage to take the votes to pay for those things. And in an adult world, you have to pay for the things you want. This is not Washington where we can put it on the credit card and we can run up the deficit um, and we can let the next generation worry about uh, the decisions we make. We have to pay for the government we have and the government we want. Okay, but their position now would be that, well, we're cleaning the pennies. So, therefore, it's hitting the business community, it's hitting the employees, uh, and so it's a totally different situation. Is that correct? Uh, I, I think, well, I mean, we, we, we cleaned a penny last year, and, and I think, uh, again, we, we can have a, a discussion about how exactly we should raise $650 million. Um, but if you're not willing to, to uh, raise $650 million, the question is, uh, and, and if the number you want to raise is, is somewhere south of that, then, then you need to be able to stand up and say, these are the things that government is paying for now that I'm willing to live without. And, and there was a lot of questioning. Uh, uh, if you watched the hearing last night, um, where, where members of the Senate wanted to go there with Lance Harris, and they said, look, if, if, if you don't think we need to write, fix the whole cliff, uh, tell us what things we should live without. Is mm -hmm. it health care? I mean, it, it always comes down to health care and higher education, and, uh, and the people who favor not solving the entire fiscal cliff have not been honest about uh, that side of the equation. Um, Nope. And, and I think we, we have a governor here who, who is not willing to go back to the era of one-time money and, and sort of using these cute little budget tricks to, to get through another year and, and maybe get past the next election. Um, and I think even, you know, the governor's biggest critics will 
acknowledged that he has had an honest budget. Um, and when we've gotten back to some 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 straight talk in the way we do this, um, but but again, I, I would have a lot more respect um, for the folks who say we shouldn't solve the entire fiscal cliff if they would be honest about the things that we have right now that they are willing to live without. And they haven't done that. So they've had, they've yeah, they've had three years to do that. So in terms of the appropriations, basically. What do we have? I mean, what, what's the status of that? Uh, it's coming up on the House floor today. Yeah. Um, if, if you tune into uh, the legislature and you look at the House floor at 9 a.m., um, they'll probably start a little late because they always start late. But mm -hmm. that's what they're going to spend the day doing. And again, there is a bill, a, a set of budget bills by Representative Cameron Henry um, that, that stopped short of solving. Of, of, of filling every hole in government and and frankly include a lot of uh, cuts to higher uh, to health care um, the, the bill that, that passed out of appropriation cut 93 million dollars um, in state general fund from the Department of Health when you take away the federal matching funds mm -hmm. that's almost a half a billion dollars um, and that uh, uh, affects pediatric day health care it affects mental health and substance abuse services that we pay for right now um, and it, it, it's a lot of funding for local hospital districts. So, so that is a direct impact on, on every community in Louisiana. Uh, there's also cuts in there for sheriffs, um, district attorneys, and, uh, and again, uh, college campuses and COPS. COPS is, I think, 90% funded in this, so, so the, the cuts to COPS would not be so severe, but there still would be cuts to, to campuses um, that's beyond the, the cuts in COPS. So, that is the Cameron Henry budget that's going to be discussed today. And then again, there's a second budget bill uh, by, by Representative Leger that will also be presumably passed. Um, but I think the idea today is, is to get those bills to the Senate, um, see what the Senate does on taxes. And, and I want to emphasize nothing that happens today on either side is going to be final. Um, it's going to be resolved, hopefully, in, in conference committees over the weekend. Um, and and um, I'm hoping and praying all this gets done by, by midnight on Monday night because I don't think there's anybody in that Capitol who wants to be there any longer than Monday. Absolutely. Uh, a couple more questions, and that is uh, I think Cameron Henry would say that, wait a minute, the budget that we uh, passed uh, in the last session, the regular session, Basically, you know, uh, the focus was the, the cuts were not in health care. In fact, there were no health care cuts. The focus was on government services in terms of, you know, uh, the governor's administration and uh, the different agencies of government. So education and health care were protected. W wouldn't that be his position? And now he's forced, and he would say that, well, now, you know, I'm forced to cut health care. Uh, the budget that the governor vetoed, um, I think Senator uh, Eric Lafleur, and, and, and uh, who who was the one who put those amendments on in the Senate, he called it a pretend budget. Mm -hmm. um, that budget that they sent to the governor was not a serious document in any way, shape, or form. It got rid of the food stamp program. It would have furloughed more than ten thousand prisoners. Uh, who, who are in jail today, it would have eliminated funding for assistant district attorneys. Basically, every local prosecutor, you would have, like, law enforcement in the state would have basically ceased to function on July 1st if they had passed that. Entire agencies would have had to, to basically stop everything they're doing on July 1st. It was not something that was tenable by any common definition because it would have crippled state government. So uh, that budget was not a serious budget. It was a demonstration of what happens if you fund health care and higher ed. What else do you have to cut? And, and I think it was intended to show that, that you can't have a functioning state government if you fu fully fund health care and higher ed. And, and it goes to prove the point that if any time you're going to cut state government, you're cutting health care and higher education because that's where the discretionary dollars go. Um, so, so, so I would push back and say um, that 
that was not a serious budget. Everybody who, who passed it in the Senate certainly knew that it was not a, a serious budget. Um, and, and Cameron Henry himself has been on record, even though he voted against Lance Harris's bill, um, Cameron Henry has said at the microphone numerous times, we need to raise some revenue. Um, he just doesn't want to raise as much revenue as, as, as the, the governor is, is proposing. Um, sure. So, so, so it comes down to, as I appreciate it, it comes down to either uh, basically cutting really deep into education and health care in terms of uh, the, the budget that's, that uh, may be out there today and, uh, or cutting those, uh, say, the DA, uh, assist, the assist, assistant DA, uh, the prisons, or raising revenues by cleaning pennies. Uh, well, cleaning pennies or renewing, uh, you, you know, the, the, uh, on the tax side, let's look at the revenue side. Um, the options are, you, you, you know, right now, the bill renews a third of a penny, uh, but gets rid of a lot of business exemptions. Um, you could uh, uh, keep the business exemptions and raise it up to a half a penny uh, and raise roughly the same amount of money. Um, those are kind of, at this point, the big choices before the Senate. And I think that's what the, you know, the Senate is gonna be debating how do we raise this money and do we put it on business or do we put it on, on uh, regular folks? Um, and, and then, uh, and then once you decide how much revenue you're willing to raise, then the question is, how do you distribute it? Um, hopefully, if they agree to um, uh, fi fix the full f fiscal cliff and go to $650 million, then we're not talking about growing government. We're not talking about adding new programs. We're talking about keeping the things we have today for the next fiscal year while paying a little bit less in sales tax. That's the, that's really the, the the argument. So there doesn't need to be cuts uh, if if the people who have already taken a tax vote are willing to um, to up that amount just a little bit more, so that students, uh, hospitals, rural hospitals, clinics, everybody who depends on on these services will have the security of knowing that that they're going to be okay next year. One last question that is uh, that I remember earlier this morning or in reading the advocate i think it was that uh the reporter mentioned that in terms of the actual cost to say a family making an income of twenty five thousand, the cost to a family making fifty thousand would be in for the first seven dollars a year and the second seventeen dollars a year i think it was um, based upon the, the numbers uh, right now in terms of the, uh, the taxes that were passed out of the Senate committee. Is, is that um, correct? Yeah. I, I, I haven't looked at the, okay. their numbers. I, I think our, our numbers would be a little bit higher, but not much higher. I think that the difference between a, a third of a penny and a half a penny, for example, um, for a middle income consumer, uh, uh, I think comes to well under $50 a year. Um, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of, of, of 35 to $40 a year. So maybe 75 cents a week, um, you're paying extra in sales tax. Um, and for the price of that, you can make sure nursing homes are funded, hospitals mm -hmm. are funded, and, uh, and LSU has the money that they need to keep operating at local levels. Um, and again, if they don't want to do that, then they could uh, uh, remove some of the sales tax exemptions um, on on business utilities, um, farm equipment, and so forth. Um, well, a lot of heavy decisions uh, to to make. Uh, <laughs> so we definitely will be watching for sure. I really do appreciate your taking your time being with us. And uh, if you don't mind, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit a couple of buttons right now and say goodbye to everybody if you could just hold on for a second as I do that uh, so uh, thanks again I really do appreciate your uh, taking your morning I know you got to get to the Capitol uh, well my, my pleasure anytime and, and I really appreciate you doing this well, thank you so much uh,